So the recording is now in progress. Hello, everyone. I hope that you are doing well. My name is Kamara Daughtry, and today we have Megan Farley, okay? She is a global PR specialist. And from an entrepreneur standpoint, and also from a social media standpoint, she is going to tell you how to scale your brand. In this digital and social world, you have to have a solid social media brand. So she's going to break down what that is, what that means, and how you can get also more business for your company and um, also keep your clients as well. So we are going to have a really good time. Um, a couple of things that I want to do. As I'm the creator of DCOW, a lot of you all are part of the Facebook group. It has almost about like 5,000 members. But what we really do is we help people get jobs and we connect recruiters um, with talent. So that's one of the main things that we do. And also, uh -oh, going over here, one thing that I want you to do today, at the end or in the middle, I want you to give to our scholarship fund. Um, I'll go to dcowmember.com and you can contribute any amount that you want and i want you to contribute um to help a student in need so they can get through school it is going to be very important a lot of students need help and we are giving out a scholarship next year that will help them so a part of this free event is you are able to give to a scholarship okay let's go back one more and then also reagan reagan farley is our guest speaker again if you are not on mute let me go through this Got it. Okay, thank you. If you are not on mute, make sure you please stay on mute until we have Q&A. But Megan, uh, Reagan, she has um, also been featured on Fox Broadcast and NBC Universal. And really, I met Reagan through another networking event um, on, through the Baltimore Association of Black Journalists. So it's really important um, in these different, uh, um, different spaces that we are in, you want to make sure that you cultivate an environment where people can have a really good time, network, and also learn. So that is what we do here at DCOW. You are about to get some uh, really good strategy, and you're about to get some really good information on digital content, and also how she um, strategizes for her Intel Media Group. So that's IMG and that's her company. So what we are going to do is this. And again, Reagan has already let us know. If you hear two dogs in her background, it's totally fine. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> Brooklyn and Dallas will bark. I'm super excited to be here, Kamara. Thank you so much. No, no, no. Um, and it's, it's, it's hilarious how we met, right? So yes, through NABJ, but um, you were coming to Baltimore and we connected in some like we connected in Forbes the culture, which is hilarious too. <laughs> no, that was too funny. I was like, you know what? I always see her on Twitter. But then when I really saw her face, without well, face to face, but when I saw her on the Zoom, I was like, oh, that's right. I got to get her on here. So now she's here. One thing, if you haven't, go ahead and put your business name, put your Instagram handle, anything people can follow you on because you never know where a connection can lead you. And we have some really good people in here. So we're going to go ahead and get started and make sure that you stay on mute. We're going to have people pop in and pop out and you never know who's popping in. So if you're going to be on camera, look decent. I just tell people that. Um, Reagan, so first and foremost, I want you to give people a little bit of background about what you do and then yeah. how'd, you, how'd you get started with your uh, company IMG. Yeah, so hi everyone. I'm super excited to be here. I am, um, of course, publicist, but I am moving out of that phase and I, I'm leaning more towards communication strategies, right? Um, because I think how we communicate is extremely important and publicity can be a bit all encompassing, although some things might may differ, right? So like um, social media, of course, is not is not PR. Marketing, of course, is not PR, but um, they are all functions in which we communicate. Um, so I, I feel like my team and I are kind of changing the lingo. Um, so not just publicists, but communication strategists. Um, I got my start um, just like anyone else for the most part, sometimes interning. Um, interning was super, super important to me. I went to an HBCU in Pennsylvania, the first HBCU, not sure if we have any, any um, HBCU graduates in the room. And I know that kind of sometimes changes, but I went to Lincoln University um, and that was super important to the fabric of my story. I served on student government um, and then from that, I was able to intern at like Entertainment Tonight with Kevin Frazier um, and also his company, Hip Hollywood. And that kind of started what is that 
like that PR journey, um, but worked for some phenomenal companies, uh, NAACP being one of them, um, and they became a client, uh, Universal Music Group, so on and so forth. And um, fast forward to now, um, right, which is my company, Intel Media Group, with, which I run with my amazing um, business partner, Deja Kramardi, and we have told stories from Harvard University um, to, we've done some work with Black Ink Compton from time to time. If you're in Atlanta, we do work with the Trap Music Museum. Um, so for us, um, I feel like we have the pulse on what millennial um, and Gen Z engagement looks like, um, but just storytelling uh, at its core. Okay, so did everybody hear that? <laughs> Reagan said, listen, I went from publicist, then communication strategist. As the creator of DCOW, I like to educate. I don't know, there may be, be some teaching in my blood somewhere. But one thing that you want to do is as you progress, right? It can be three months, it can be six months, but it's really important that you change your title because now more people will reach out to you. The word PR during the pandemic just doesn't sit with people because there were a lot of people who couldn't get booked um, because you couldn't have in-person contact. So what's what's next? How do you generate revenue? Well, she said, I'm a communication strategist. That means she can handle social media. And, you know, there there is somebody, she has actually an assistant who handles her um, email. So that's really important. But what she's telling you is, listen, I move with the times. And I really liked how you said that you have a pulse on the Millennial View, the Trap Museum. So you can go from Harvard to the intellects, so now you can go back to Atlanta uh, to where a lot of black culture is. So that's really important as well. I wanted to ask you this, when you talk about businesses, because we have a lot of business owners in here and you have to serve as your own PR person, right? Mm -hmm. What would you tell them and how they can generate clients and um, really keep their clients? Yeah, because even right now, I'm my own PR person too, right? Like, right. Um, I, I know sometimes as publicists, and I see we have a few PR people in the room too, so shout out to, to you guys as well, because it does get tough um, trying to tell our personal stories, right? And then also trying to tell the story of clients. Um, but the one thing I will say is, as a business owner, um, it's very important to define your why, right? Um, and I think sometimes as business owners, we get, we get away from the core messaging, um, because before someone buys from you, and I'm sorry, my two old dogs are in the background, um, before someone buys from you, they buy into you. So what does that mean? That means having a clear and concise way to tell your story, packaging it up. So no, it doesn't always have to mean that I am the sole person in front of the camera, but when it comes to telling the story of your company, um, and I, I said it a little bit earlier, um, Intel, we believe that we are at the intersection of impact, influence, and ingenuity, and we also believe that we have the post on millennial and Gen Z audiences. It's short and to the point. You remember a few things from that statement, right? Ingenuity, impact, influence, um, and then millennial and Gen Z audiences. So without me giving you this long drawn out spill, I've already given you something that you can at least connect with. Um, and you may say, well, ingenuity, how? Influence, how? Um, impact. Um, but I think it is very important to just take a moment, even if it's for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and really reflect on your why. Um, because when you are creating that story for social media, for interviews, um, and for different things like that, you want it to resonate with someone. It may not necessarily resonate with everyone because everyone is not your target audience. Um, and I think sometimes when we're building out companies is, oh, I wanna work for everyone. And that's amazing, right? Um, that, doesn't, that, that doesn't mean niche down because what I, what I do believe is that we can do everything. Um, however, I do believe sometimes if certain things don't connect with, connect with specific audiences, you do have to find your lane. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Mm -hmm. Also, when you talk about your why, there's somebody in here, he is a black man. He graduated from Morehouse. The reason why I'm saying black is because he has his own uh, laundry business, right? Yes, yes. So that's, that's really rare. He has his own laundry company where he takes, he gets your laundry. And I lived in New York City. So that is a real, that's a booming business. And one of the things is when you have your why, people, they do, they buy into you. They want to know who the person is. They just don't want to keep hitting the customer service rep. They're going to say, can I talk to somebody? <laughs> Give me a person I can talk to. Mm -hmm. So when you're on social media, I really think it's important when you're scaling your brand to the next level, even from a business standpoint, that you show people who you are and what you believe in, because that will also attract certain people to you as well. 
Now yeah. let's talk about, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, I was just gonna say, I get a client inquiries all the time and they're like, hey, I'm not comfortable. I don't wanna be the person behind, behind you know, the camera. And my rebuttal to that, and especially, I don't know if the entire room is black, but I definitely find black women sometimes when I'm talking to them, they're like, oh, I don't wanna be um, the forefront. And I'm like, no, sis, be the forefront, share your message, share your story, because you never know who is gonna resonate with. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to share everything, right? Like I am I am the type of publicist where if you don't wanna show up in a suit and tie every single day, don't be that person, be authentically you and that'll connect with somebody. So be you and the rest, the rest will follow. And I, I do just wanna say that, that sometimes we are so afraid to, sh to share our stories, but sometimes we just gotta have the same caucasity, the same intellect as, as someone else. Yeah, I definitely agree. And we will be taking this, uh, we have our PowerPoint up just so you all can follow her and just read any information that you want to about Reagan. But if you want to, um, a good way to see everybody who's on the call is go into gallery mode if you're not. And that means you can see just every single box on here. So now let's go to our next question. This is really big, okay? The virtual world has expanded. Before mm -hmm. it was a joke when we were like, oh, we're just going to do, we're, I'm just going to stay at home. And work. <laughs> yeah. People would just laugh like, oh, they're not doing anything until people were forced to. And productivity went up, you know, sales sometimes went up because people are on their computers all the time. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about virtual planning and how did you navigate through that during the pandemic? And I want you to give me an example <laughs> how it worked, I want the inner workings because let me put this out there before you answer. There are a lot of you who uh, need to go back to your newsroom or who even need to do some own personal branding. You need to, number one, host an event, but you also need to learn how to do a digital event the right way, right? And it, with a large group of people. So just tell us how you did that. And, and I feel like this too. So I, I do feel like experts hire experts, right? So like, I am not the person who is planning events. I, I am planning to a certain level, right? But like, we have someone on on our team and I, I'm never opposed to giving folks flowers. So we have a young lady by the name of Chantel. Um, when I mentioned Harvard, we work with Harvard University, their Trotter Collaborative on their digital, um, their digital event. They had something in May. And I never noticed how difficult it is to plan a virtual event because the bells and whistles look different. Um, <laughs> they look completely different than being in person. Like you have to make sure technology is working, right? Um, and then I, I think in the beginning of the pandemic, everyone flocked to a tool called hop in. Um, and I think folks are still using it, but so many different iterations have came out since then. Um, so I think what that looks like is um, like if it was in an in-person event, making sure all your ducks are in a row, making sure right. you have your run of show, um, making sure you've done a test run with your speakers, your hosts, and whoever of that nature, because right. those are important too. Um, they're not reading from a teleprompter in most cases from, for a virtual event. Um, so what does your script look like? What right. does social media engagement look like? Will you have a DJ? Um, because I don't know why I go back and forth even with clients now on are we going to have a DJ for this virtual event? And it's like, of course, you're going to have a DJ for this virtual event. If you are having an event that's two and three hours, no one wants to sit in front of their computer for that long and not be entertained, right. um, whether it's in your computer, on your computer or not, because I'm pretty sure folks aren't listening after a certain point. That's so right. how can you create the most engaging user experience possible virtually? Um, so does that look like having real-time conversations? Does that look like having breakout conversations? Is that a DJ? What type of talent is that? And I think um, if you're thinking of all of that in a granular, granular level, um, then you've created the perfect event. Um, but then how are you also marketing? One of the things you did amazing, um, Kamara, for this webinar is pushing it out. Um, pushing it out not only to your email list because I know I got like a few emails I was like oh my goodness I love this um, <laughs> but but that's the beauty of of planning something virtually right um, and then also putting it on social media running some advertisements behind that I think folks forget about social media advertising and that is such um, a big portion of what we're doing now digitally so regardless of having a large following folks aren't seeing your content right now and you got to be prepared to put some dollars behind what it is that you're working on. You know what? You said something that stuck. And from new stations that I have worked with, from personal brands, even to people, sometimes you all, your own business, even if you do a side hustle, right? Mm -hmm. And you say, hey, 
I am going to do photography. When you said nobody sees your content, how can people see your content? Say you start off your brand, zero followers, right? You get your friends, you get about 15, 30 followers, but you need clients. Your, your job is to get them. How do you get them? Um, so I think it's taking a multi, multi, a multi pro, a multi approach, I'm sorry, strategy, right? So social media is just one element. Right. Um, but then there then lies the social media advertising. Um, and I think you and I may have had a clubhouse conversation or we didn't, right? I don't, I, I don't remember. Maybe did we ever have a clubhouse conversation? Not yet. Not yet, but we will do that and we will do a Twitter spaces, right? Because yes, what, we will. What I what I think there, and I know most folks have since migrated from Clubhouse, but the power of voice is more powerful than a picture. So why, why I flocked to Clubhouse in the beginning, and I, I'm not saying everybody go run out and put Clubhouse a part of your strategy. However, I think what I am saying is find a tool where folks can hear you beyond just going live because people digest your content in different ways. So it is totally great to, to post on Instagram. However, if people can hear your thought process, they're a step away from booking you, which is one of the reasons why I flocked to Clubhouse in the beginning. Um, and I, I can say that I'm not on there as much anymore, but right. the power behind my voice, the power behind my expertise, folks, folks uh, flocked to that. Um, and I, I say that in a way to say there is more than one way to skin a cat. So when you are creating content, yes, create content that resonates, do well with that Instagram strategy. However, Instagram is not the only platform. That's Get right. to meet people where they are, right? So like even for me, um, Instagram is where I have my most followers. However, every so often, you're going to catch me having a Twitter spaces conversation. You're going to catch me um, doing li going live on Facebook. You're going to catch me in these different spaces because people can digest your content in different ways. Um, and it's funny that you mentioned photographer because in the beginning I was talking to one of my friends about photography and him getting on clubhouse and he was like no I don't think there's a community for me there if it's not a community for you somewhere create it That's you right. be the one to 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 spearhead it and I know sometimes that can be a heavy burden but in my rebuttal back to my friend was if you haven't shot every single person in DC I'm not advocating for clubhouse however what I am saying is you never know where your next customer will come from so oh, really make a point, make a point to not be above anything, because even if you don't see a community for you in that space, be the first, be innovative, be um, have have ingenuity and kind of go from there. You never know what where things will land you. So I will say when you are looking for your next customer, create content that resonates. People digest your content in so many different ways. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Um, I, I didn't want to be on TikTok when it first um, launched. I did not want to be on there because I, I don't like the pointing thing, but that's just me. Right. Um, but I will say when I thought about it more as an expert, it makes, it doesn't make sense for me not to be on TikTok. So I had to bite that bullet. So I'm sorry. I probably gave you guys a whole mouthful. Listen, <laughs> is there anybody else? Can somebody put some clapping emojis in the chat? I mean, she's <laughs> dropping gems. Okay. I mean, really, she is doing a great job. I'll tell you this. I'm, I'm going to have to break it down to everybody because even when I talk to non-millennial journalists, I mean, not non-millennial journalists, but uh, non-millennial people in the media field, they can say, Kamara, listen, do I really need this? And I'm with you on TikTok. I was like, listen, I'm not making any money from TikTok, so I'm not going to be posting. But then on one day I had a video, I got, I got a couple thousand, but then I only had a couple hundred. They were like, oh, but you got to keep posting. But I'm like, wait a minute. If I go on IG Reels, because then IG Reels came out, then I'll get more uh, views. But one of the things that I have noticed is I have to turn my views into customers. Mm -hmm. And that was, that is my thing about being on a platform because- yeah. Uh, I know that you were talking about ingenuity. When a lot of these uh, creators, they started these brands, they said, listen, I know I'm going to have to work my way up. And I like what you said, a multi-approach. It's going to take some work, mm -hmm. right? So you might do it two or three times. You say, wow, nobody, nobody registered, nobody budged. But then if you keep on doing it and people see that repetition, you will get a lot of feedback. So I think that that's really important. Now let's go into revenue streams. This is big. So if you are working at a news station, if you work for yourself or if you have a side hustle, 
you need to have a digital or a social media uh, revenue stream. Mm-hmm. And I want you to tell us without, without telling us your secrets, <laughs> I want you to tell us um, what are some different ways on social media uh, people can generate that revenue to keep their business going. Listen, it's okay. I'm going to give y'all some secrets. You know okay. why though? Because I, I feel like we hold so much close to the chest, so I don't mind. And I'm not really going to tell y'all anything that's too secret. Ebooks. Ebooks are important. Um, and I think sometimes we shy away from those because we don't feel like the expert. But again, back to earlier, why not you? So putting something together, for me, it could be six simple steps for um, building your publicity strategy. It could be something that you sell for $10.99, $5.99, $15.99, whatever you want to sell that for, because someone will buy it. If not today, if not tomorrow, if not next week, put it out there, put it out there, talk about it, Um, have these things called funnels, sales funnels, right? Like um, even tonight I mentioned like, hey, I have this free ebook. You guys can, you know, sign up for that. There's so many different things that you can do because now then you are in my wheelhouse. You're right. in my wheelhouse. You're getting information from me. You're getting emails. Um, and it's not a done for you service. So when I say done for you services, I mean, I don't have to work as hard to do that, right? Like we want multiple streams. So one being passive um, and that can be anything. I know um, one young lady has a podcast, right? So can you imagine jumpstarting your first podcast um, and putting on an ebook for that? So many people want to know because so many people are scared. But if you do it now and do it scared, you never know what what can happen. So create that ebook from there, then create that webinar. Um, Because again, you are the expert. Um, From there, you can do, you know, lives and you can do merchandise. And there's so many different things. And you don't have to do those things in that order. Um, But there are so many ways to create revenue streams. Um, And I think sometimes we shy away from that to say, oh, well, I don't want to do that because this person did that. You're you and that's your superpower. Um, so never, never shy away from those things. Reagan, are you trying to be on the BET Awards? <laughs> <laughs> you talk so, no, you talk no. so well. <laughs> you talk so well. But listen, um, oh, let me go back. Let me go back, actually. We are going to open up for Q&A. And let's talk about, oh, hi, Chris. Welcome, welcome on. We're going to ask that everybody stays on mute and listen to me. One time I was on a Zoom call and I didn't even know I was off mute. Thank God I didn't say nothing crazy. It was like, hey, do you mind turning off your mic? I was like, yeah, so it happens. I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, let's talk about digital content strategy. A mm-hmm. lot of us are writers. Like I enjoy producing. I like being behind the scenes. I like writing. But now there is a strategy when you are writing for your business online, right? Mm-hmm. To you, it may look good and say, oh, that can get a lot of people. But anytime you write, it is to do two things. It is to inform and it is to uh, sell or get people to sign up for your newsletter, which is mm-hmm. another way of email marketing. But that's another conversation. So I wanted to ask you, in terms of your uh, digital content strategy, what do you know typically have in mind? Yeah, so so knowing your, knowing your audience, right? So like even right now, I am not the person that's posting on someone's social media. I'm, I am nine times out of 10, not the person posting on my own social media. However, I'm clear on what the strategy is, right? Like when we talk digital content strategy, um, although I am not in the day-to-day of even my own social media, I know a few things about myself on social. I know that informative content works. I know that um, at inspirational content works. I know that if I rep my HBCU, that content works. And I know if I rep my sorority. So like, I, I know content that speaks to my audience. I know that it's 69% women, 37% men. Come on with the analytics. Wait, 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 oh, wait, 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 <laughs> hold on. Cause I'm an analytics person too. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. have men, did you see? what our global PR specialist said. I know who my audience is, not just, okay, I'm talking to um, older people. Yeah. No, she said, my audience is 69% women. Mm -hmm. She broke it down. I just want y'all to put that out. Instagram has insights because statistics sell. Mm -hmm. One of the main reasons people come you know, just by the grace of God to the Facebook group is because of engagement, but they also see the numbers increasing. Yep. So they see, okay, she almost got 5,000. I had 5,700. Then we went to membership only. Then uh, 
4,000, but then you, it will be a lot of people retweeting. But I know who my audience is. It's media professionals. Bingo. Bingo. So now break that down. Uh, but I wanted people to hear that. Look at your insights. Look at your Twitter statistics. Facebook, if you go into the Facebook business area, they also have statistics that you need to know about your business. And if you have just started your account and you don't know statistics, determine who are you selling to? And that will present yep. your audience. Go ahead. Yep. What I always say is think about your customer as a person. So yeah. let's, so and in a grand scheme of things. So let's say I call her Ashley. Ashley is between the ages of um, 25 to 34. She's either from Baltimore, Atlanta, or New York. Um, she loves fashion. Um, she wants to be in PR. She attended an HBCU. So like, if I can now humanize Ashley, I know what content to put out around her. Let me talk a little bit more about Black women in business. Let me talk a little bit more about being an HBCU graduate and what that looks like. Let me talk a little bit more about um, maybe more so the political projects, just in case she wants to go into politics. But I know if I drum up that entertainment content, I'll get more likes. But will I get more client will I get more clients or will I get more sales so I gotta know how to play those certain games too right so like mm -hmm. entertainment content fares well on my fares well on my social media but I have since kind of moved from the entertainment space so I want to drum up more politics because I want more political clients so I think although I don't do my social media I can't even tell you the last time I really touched my social media I still know those things and I am still sitting with my strategist to say, hey, you think this works, but I think that works. Um, I know, and that is not micromanaging. I think what that is, is having a strategy that you're clear on and stick right. with. That's important. You said you hired a strategist because mm -hmm. during the pandemic, <clears throat> you transitions from public relations to communication strategist. So mm -hmm. how does that dynamic work? If you haven't touched your social media, so you have somebody um, uh, uh, moderating it for you? Mm -hmm. So I am giving her, so her and I, her and I have meetings. Um, I am giving her suggestions. We're coming up and we're creating content together. Um, there's like two videos that are on my page um, that I, that she recently posted and we did like a content day. So I was in New York for like a client meeting. Um, I made it intentional to say, Hey, um, and her name is Sade. She's amazing. Um, but I, I said, Hey, Sade, I'll be in New York. Let's shoot some content. So let's, mm -hmm. let's get a series of photos. Let's get a series of videos. Let's talk about Intel. Um, let's talk about one of my loves is, is fragrances. So let's talk about fragrances because when I post fragrance stuff, people love it. Um, so let's do all of these different things. Um, and I am helping her with strategy. Like, again, I am not micromanaging. I'm giving her my insight because at one point I did run my own page, right? So right. I am giving her what I know works for, for my page. Um, I know sometimes flyers with, with me do well, but when it's flyers with other people, they don't do the greatest. So, wow. um, you know, like I got to know those things um, in order to, to push out what needs to get pushed out. So, yeah. No, that's really good. And then I want you to go over when you were talking about, it's something that stuck out, mm -hmm. not with the virtual planning, but how are you able to envision all of these things? A team <laughs> even when you're starting out do you need a team say when you were a one man where you when you were a one woman show yeah. when you were a one woman show how yeah. did you build up tell me the process yeah when when I was a one woman show and I know this sounds so cliche I always knew that I would be at this point right so what does that look like taking the necessary steps to journal we miss those things sometimes write your plan out and I won't get all spiritual but write that plan out and make it plain um, be as succinct as possible. If it's, hey, I want to be a Fortune 500 company. I want 10 employees. I want right. to only take on um, nonprofit work. I want to be the best journalist in this universe. And then start to build out to what that looks like. Um, so one is writing things down. Two is if I don't have the resources right now, I'm going to go find them. I'm going to check out my small business resource center. Okay. I'm going to join groups like this. I'm going to collaborate. I'm going to connect. And um, I know bartering can be interesting sometimes, but if I need to barter with someone, that's what I'm going to do. So even when I met my business partner, we didn't jump out the gate and become um business business besties business associates whatever you want to call it okay. um we met we connected we were kindred spirits we stayed in touch um and then from there we decided to do business together we all we both had our individual companies I intel is 
fairly new, right? Like, so Intel is new as of January. Um, and we've been doing this type of work as of January, but for years prior, um, I was the Reagan Farley agency. She was deluxe publicity. And we would just bring each other on projects. We would just test each other out. Okay, hey, I'm uh -huh. on this project. Um, can you help me? And then she'd do the same thing. Um, so I think a few things you have to, one, write things down. Two, you have to be intentional. Uh, three, you know, find resources, um, find a support system, because I think support systems are important. But on this journey to PR for me, um, I think I was only as strong as the people who supported me, right? And never feeling like I'm above anything, because I think sometimes we get in our own heads of, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. But some, you never know where your blessings lie. Um, you never know where your blessings lie. So just never being afraid to collaborate as long as it makes sense. Um, and I think that's how you receive different blessings and how different people start to know about you. But um, the one thing I did overall when I was first starting out was stay consistent. Um, mm -hmm. Put put out that content, pound the pavement, um, pitch yourself. You guys should have media kits as business owners. Um, you, sh you should have your sizzle reels if you're journalists. Like there are so many different ways um, that you can still get started without having a ton of money. That's right. No, I agree. The Facebook group, it was a, a guy gave me the idea. And I mean, it's, it was in 20, about 18, he gave it to me. Mm -hmm. And I look forward, the name is saying digital career opportunities. Everything now is digital. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that two years ago. So when you talk about writing things down, that's really important. Another thing that um, I'm going to ask two more questions. I'm going to open up the floor. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Then I'll open it up a little bit. But um, let's one more time. We just talk about, oh, this is what I wanted to ask you. How do you get clients? So mm -hmm. when people reach, because when I look at social media, people have this, and followers do matter. Don't get me wrong. There are a lot of people with good followers, but then they also say, hey, listen, they're not, they're, how can I say this? Their followers don't match your bank account. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got somebody who got 77,000 followers, but it might look a little different on the other side. But you are very successful. I mean, you go from the DMV, from New York to Atlanta, even on the West Coast. And I mean, you're global, so you worldwide. But how do people reach out to you even without a large following count or do you reach out to them? Yeah, so a lot of my business is is referral. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 a lot of my business is referral. Um, social media is great. I like to say I'd rather be paid over popular. So you guys do not have to know me. I will do my work and keep it, keep it pushing, if that makes sense. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will, I will do my work and keep it moving, but, um, I will say this, um, I will say that it, like things like this situations like this is how you get clients. You know, you, you speak in certain spaces, um, you connect with certain people, you again, push that content out, um, find ways to also talk about your brand and talk about your business. Um, and I, I know sometimes as publicists, um, folks will say, oh, that person shouldn't be in the spotlight. That person shouldn't um, share their story. Oh, it's all about the clients. And that is very true. It is all about the clients in my space. However, if I don't talk about Intel Media Group on certain platforms, then how will you know that I'm truly doing the work? That's um, right. So, so I have to just as well sell myself as, as anyone else, right? Like um, you have to get my opinion on what the digital landscape of publicity looks like. You have to get my opinion on um, even what the, what, what communicating with a journalist looks like, right? Because even that looks different now. Pitching for me six months ago, is looks different than what pitching for me now looks like, Um it may, and even in a sense, it's going back to those death sides where I do need to pick up the phone and say, hey, hey, Chris, um, I got a story for you. You know, this is what it's looking like. Sometimes I do have to do that now where I didn't have to do that last year or two years ago. Um, so creating those spaces for touch points. Um, I'm going to shot this journalist out. So her name is Pollyanna Reed. She's over at Forbes. When I say her and I connect at least once or twice a quarter just to connect right, off, right. off of, hey, I don't need anything from you, sis. Let's just connect. Um, and I think sometimes you have to do that too. It isn't always about reaching out to someone because you need something. 
something. However, it's about building those organic relationships. So um, referrals are still my bread and butter. Um, like I mentioned, when I was on Clubhouse, that was a large lead generator because people aren't seeing me post the picture on a red carpet. They're hearing my voice. Um, so I am encouraging you guys, hop on Twitter spaces, have those real-time conversations. Um, and even Clubhouse still might be a space. Of course, just because folks aren't talking about it anymore, nine times out of 10, somebody's on there. Um, so I think if you can do a combination of traditional, so word of mouth, digital, um, and then um, just events, right? Like that's how you get clients. Um, and even don't shy away from LinkedIn because a lot of my corporate clients come from LinkedIn. So I think there is so many different ways. It's going to vary depending on industry, but there's a lot of different ways that you can connect with people and find your ideal client. Y'all Reagan out here dropping gems. And thank <laughs> you to everybody who is tweeting. Oh, if come you, on, tweets. <laughs> yes, yes. Crystal Horn. Crystal Horn has been a member of DCOW for a while. Crystal and April. she is a journalist and she is amazing. She's in the Atlanta area. So next time you're in Atlanta, Reagan, we might need to have an Atlanta like party or meet up for you. Can we? I'm a member of the gathering spot. Y'all. I'm so a member of the gathering spot too. Yes. Okay. okay. That was my question. What we're going to do is I like to keep things organized. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. Like the hand, the, the, it goes to reactions at the bottom and just raise it, do a hand raise. That way I like to keep everything in order. Great. Oh, we have a lot of questions. Good. Okay, we're going to first start off with Taja. Hey, Tasha. Hey, hey Tamara. Hi. Hey, Reagan. Um, I had put my question in the chat. I'm not sure if you saw it, but earlier you had mentioned that as a business owner, you should have a media kit where you're referring to an EPK. Mm -hmm. you'll, hear you'll hear a few different terms. You'll hear electronic press kit, so EPK, or you'll hear media kit, or you'll hear one sheet. Um, all of those kind of sing from the same tune. Um, what varies is like a one sheet is probably just everything on one sheet, right? Um, EPK can be, a, can I drop, can I drop something in the chat yep. and y'all see it? Yep. It just depends because I actually have one or a speaker sheet. So like if you all are doing like events, um, like let's say you all speak on a specific topic. So that should be like your name, your bio, the topics that you speak on, um, how someone can find you on social media um, and kind of like going from there. Um, hold on, my computer is so slow. I'm gonna drop an example though. And chat. if you need to send it to me or whatnot, feel free and I can get it to everybody. But one thing that I do want to say is even if you, um, I was just telling a friend who is very successful as well, but a lot of us, we need to have our own personal reels. What does that mean? We have one for the business. We have one for our brand, right? But then what about the work that you are doing? What about the things that you, I really like, one of the things that I like about Instagram Reels is that you get the behind the scenes, like, you know, the different challenges where people had the music, it was, it's like 15 seconds, but you see them working. I would see content strategists showing us their calendar and I would go, wow, I'm gonna reach out to them. So what you wanna do is you wanna start doing a personal Reel. And that's something that I'm gonna do. Uh, about two to three minutes and then that way you show people I know Reagan was talking about LinkedIn Twitter put mm -hmm. some money behind it put about 50 to 75 dollars on it and then mm -hmm. watch even with the views but you need to make sure that you put booking on there and what your specialty is because mm -hmm. when you post something there has to be a why when it goes back to that why you want your personal real just not to show your accolades but for other people to reach out to you for clients so I think that's really important as well yeah 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 and and that can also be um something that you repurpose right so like that can go on your website that can go on social media that can go um when we talk about a multi-approach strategy that can go a few different places so don't shy away from making sure that it is also um digital as well as uh hard copy oh this media kit that you showed me looks good i need to send it to everybody just give me one, one second More and it's dated real. guys i need to uh, um i need to have someone on my team update it but just to kind of give you an example and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a client. You have on your team, huh? How many people do you have on your team? Five. We small but mighty. <laughs> That's a big team. Marina, okay. 
the first and last name and then go ahead and tell us uh just just give us a small some small uh, information about you please hi everybody hey. um hi. my name is marina i own i'm a fashion blogger content creator my blog is called her millennial closet right that is followed I love your page. Um, thank you. I'm gonna follow you back. <laughs> thanks. Um, I am so new to this space. I started my blog about a year ago. So I mostly do style posts, um, helping women elevate helping uh, women elevate their looks, just that overall confidence. I believe that you can look great without breaking the bank. And but there's also nothing wrong with buying expensive stuff, but it's okay to be on the budget and still look right. So that's all my blog do showcase those things. However, like I said, I'm new to this whole social media world, new to being an entrepreneur. I've been in corporate America for almost a decade now. So I'm in consulting and stuff. So trying to step out of that and just coming into my own being and being an entrepreneur. It has been kind of like a bittersweet moment. I love creating content. I love styling. I love doing all of that. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to the, for the money, my bank account part, <laughs> I'm having a little bit of hard time with just that in general. So mm -hmm. I have, um, I have this thing that I do. I did it over the summer and people asked me to bring it back. It's called VIP Day with Marina. So every new season, so when a new season starts, the fall season is about to come, I'll help you like get your clothes ready, transition mm -hmm. to fall, all of that, give you the latest trends, all of that. I started, I started to do that, but the fall version is coming up. The long, the short part of this story is I'm just having a hard time with the whole putting money in my bank account part. Um, I have a decent amount of following. Um, I started this a year ago, so I'm not trying to be greedy, but at the same time, it's like trying to get myself out there. Marina, so, let me ask you a question. I was about to say, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So the reason why, because we are interested when you talk about, because when we talk about scaling your brand, you do it with a purpose in one sentence, because I know Reckon was saying um, Intel Media Group. Mm -hmm. Is broken down in three words and it can't be this long drawn out I know. Mm -hmm. so you need to give almost what we call a pitch right an elevator pitch mm -hmm. it's about maybe 15 to 20 seconds sometimes even shorter mm -hmm. so in about one sentence tell us what do you do i'm a person i'm a stock blogger a fashion blogger you're a fashion blogger and you want to know from blogging about fashion how can you make money yes okay reagan now Okay, we're going to we gonna give you some buzz where it says um, you create individualized experiences through mm -hmm. styling um, and through your blog. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Right. Because what what happens is you want to and you can you can play around with that. That was kind of rough, but like you're creating individualized styling experiences um, through the work that you're doing. Right. Like. Um, your style of acting auto, your like whatever you throw out there, um, that's what people are going to pay for. You create luxurious experiences. Um, and that's the energy that you'll go when you are speaking with clients. Um, and I'll say this too, we're going to take that term out new um, because you're you are in the growing phase. So we we taking out this term new. This is what you do. Um, and we're going to speak confidently about that. Um, what I what I will say is when you are making money, some of these consultations are you um are you charging for those because we're we're going to move out we're also going to move out the term greedy right um because if this is your craft if this is what you do full time even if it is what you do part time the goal is to make money um mm -hmm. if this is not charity case styling services <laughs> there's a time and a place for that so mm -hmm. yeah so talk to me talk to me a little bit more about that so i really don't do the personal styling one-on-one I decided to do like a little section like I was saying that start every new season okay I a one hour two hour zoom call with a bunch of ladies I did it over the summer and it went really well mm -hmm. and people asked me to bring it back what I did was um, I charged 35 dollars for the section for an hour or two hours mm -hmm. and come in I help you transition your winter your spring closet into fall into summer teaching you different tips trending pieces just overall restyling your whole wardrobe but doing it like a zoom call 
like okay. this. And then they ask me start questions and stuff like that. Um, I am thinking about changing that to an e-course. So every then I have a different version. Instead of doing it on a call, they just have the access to the portal. Yeah, so this is what so I want you say, to do. Oh, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's okay. This is what I want you to do because we have some more people who have questions. And if you're just now joining us, if you are sticking with us, this is recorded. So this will be um, on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure that we get to the other questions. I want you to uh, book a time with Reagan and she can go in more in depth with you. So maybe yeah. she can build you out a strategy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's do that. But yeah, I, I think, um, I, and I'll say one final piece, give them some elements in an ebook give them some elements in a virtual course. Um, and then should they want one-on-one, -on -one, that also needs to be a situation. So now you have four different ways that you can, that they can connect with you, but they need to pay. So we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Perfect. All right. I, can I just send you a DM? Is that okay? Yeah, that, that's, that's fine. You can send me a DM. Okay. Thank you. Thank Sounds you. good. Thank you for your question. Venice. you have been waiting so patiently <laughs> and you hey. are quite popular you are the founder of Becoming Storyteller, and make sure you all follow her on Instagram. And we're going to have about 15 more minutes of this because we start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. So, Venice, uh, please just ask your question. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kamara, for tagging me in this last night. And I saw the post. I was like, oh, I have to have to join in. So I appreciate that. Um, like she said, I am the creator and host of the Becoming Storytellers podcast. It's essentially a podcast to highlight, celebrate, and create community for journalists of color. So I interview journalists of color from all over the country. They talk about how they got to where they are. They talk about their um, journey gems to help other journalists to excel in their careers and that sort of thing. And this mm -hmm. is right on time because I'm actually at a point where I'm looking to scale the podcast and really expand it. And so a lot of what you said, Reagan, has been very um, helpful. And I will be using some of that. Kamara, by the way, I need to get you as a guest because I have been following um, Decal for a long time and I love what you are doing with that. So um, I guess my question is, um, when scaling, how do you decide what to focus on first? when uh -huh. you're now looking to monetize your expertise. So we are definitely going to focus on what makes you money, right? Like that, that is the overall goal. No, things aren't always about money, 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 but we also got to focus on what pays the bills. Um, I, I think also though, you got to also focus on the story too, because before someone buys from you, they buy into you. Um, I think someone else is writing in the chat um before someone buys from you they buy into you so figuring out what that story looks like right and putting putting it out to different audiences so i'm thinking even when i pitch clients right um i could pitch a client in Ford, i could pitch a client in fast company i could pitch them on bt, BT or revolt right? right all of those stories look different though so for the different audiences that you have um, you also have to have different stories for those audiences. Although that story sings from the same tune at a genuine, at a granular level, um, you also have to have different ways in which you talk to them. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. Did that answer, did that answer your question? No, that does actually. And a lot of people have asked me because I'm sharing everyone else's stories and I right. don't really share my story much because I keep so my guests front and center, but that's something I'm going to start to do more because I've been in the journalism industry for over a decade, have worked in several different markets. And so, yes. you know, I have the story behind that and the expertise behind that as well. So that was very helpful. Yeah, and, and just start pushing it out there. Thank you so much. And um, we definitely can connect on social media too, if you have any more questions. Thank you again. And one of the things that I want to add, Benice, because Reagan, I mean, that's really good. Focus on what makes you money. Right. If you helping people get jobs makes you the most revenue and people always come to you, that's what you focus on. And another thing is if people always are reaching out to you to highlight them, you use this time as an advertisement right. because that's what you're doing for their business. So that's really important. Leslie, do you have a question? Thank you. Leslie Tops. Hi, Kamara. How are Hi. you? Great With my morning. hand raised. <laughs> no, but I saw that you got off camera and I like your background. So I want to know if you have a question. <laughs> I, not necessarily right now, but I do want to thank Reagan. And uh, have we met Reagan? We have not met, but oh. we, we follow each other on social. So awesome. it, we yeah. may have been in com email communication, but we have not met in person. Nice to I finally meet you. <laughs> yeah. 
And I am glad that you said that because I'm one of the publicists that people don't know like my real name, but they hear the Tops PR from. I'm based in Atlanta um, and they don't really know my face. So I definitely get what you were saying. I just, I I just want to thank uh, Kamara for this event. I'm so glad I hopped on. I see, I see the emails coming through. I'm like, you know, this was interesting. Let me hop on. And Reagan, awesome, awesome job. Will you be sharing the um, recording, Kamara? I will. I will be awesome. sharing it. Yes, this was really good. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank I didn't you. I'm in Atlanta often, so I would love to connect the next time I'm there. I, I'm definitely familiar with you and your company, so we'll love to connect. Perfect, perfect. And Leslie, I did not mean to. That's okay. I'm sorry. I <laughs> was making okay. sure as people entered the room. But one of the things, but thank you very much, Leslie. One of the yes. things. And oh, thank you, ahead. Reagan. That makes me feel so special. <laughs> one of the things also that I want everybody to know is um, make sure you follow Reagan on Twitter. And tonight's event, you will be, um, if you would like to. You can go to dcowmember.com and you can give to our scholarship fund. There are some people, there are uh, two college students who are in need of a scholarship. And what we are going to do is we are going to help them. So this free event allows us to bring on a speaker, bring on somebody who will help you. And then in return, you go out and you can help somebody else. So if you want to go to dcowmember.com, go to scholarship, and then you contribute to a student in need. We're going to take two more questions and then we are going to head out. Um, let me see. I have Aaron. And if you have already asked your question, feel free to put your hand down. Hi. Hello. Um, I, um, now, um, I'm still trying to navigate this industry though. I went to school for it. You know, I'm still yeah. trying to learn, um, um, on where I want to be in this industry. Um, and at this point I want to do digital journalism in mm -hmm. like, um, doing my own thing and if possibly on television, um, but, um, uh, but mainly my own thing. And I want to focus on, um, lifestyle um like specifically travel and food um how can i make income doing that as far as um not only probably of course on youtube but as far as getting sponsorship you know like you know when you have like sponsors and stuff like that from let's say travel companies or even food companies and stuff like that how can i do that yeah as a whole I think one is building up your audience, right? Like from, from A to Z. Um, but then I think it's also starting local. So right now restaurants are in dire need of customers in, in some places. Like I know I still go into restaurants and it looks like a ghost town. Um, while you're building out, is there a way that um, you can connect with some of these restaurants locally in your city and say, hey, you know, I'd love to come and do a review. Is there some way that I can get a free appetizer? Is there some way that I can, because some of those things, the more that you can build those relationships from there, um, you start to say, hey, okay, well, you know, I'm, I may have done this for free in the beginning, but what loves to go live um, there's a young lady, she's a, tra she's a food blogger here in Baltimore. Her name is like Bacon and Bellini. Um, and what she does is she'll highlight different restaurants that open here in the city. Um, and then she'll do like small advertising packages like, hey, um, you know, you can, you can connect with me or I'll come and do a review for you, but here's the advertising cost. So I think you build out very slowly, but surely, um, and kind of go from there and ingrain some of those things into your wheelhouse. Um, but of course, getting that content out and establishing the relationship first is way more important than just jumping out of the gate and saying, hey, pay me. So the best advice I would say is establish those relationships locally first. Um, be that expert in your field. Um, connect with other people who are in your space. So Bacon and Bellini, she's awesome. Um, here, there's also another uh, young lady called the Charm City Food Blogger. Literally, I would see her on Twitter and folks would say, hey, I'm in Baltimore for the night. Where's the best place to get a, a crab cake? So if you know the spaces like the back of your hand like that um, and you have good content, um, I, I think that there's beyond a shadow of a doubt that folks wouldn't pay you for it. Okay, um, now I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, um, and um, I might start here. Um, I do want to branch out because I like to travel like throughout the country and stuff. Um, and, um, but though I plan on moving out of Charlotte in a couple of years, um, um, 
So um, I would, so, so if I was to connect with, well, I mean, I could easily connect with, let's say a black owned like business, you know, um, here um, or, you know, was, but Aaron, basically, um, yeah. I'm sorry, you know what? We have one more person who has a question. We are on a time limit. I would love for you to ask your question in direct message to Reagan. Reagan okay, I will connect with you, Reagan. Is- amazing he um he is a faithful member of dcow he attends the event and you all will definitely do well in connecting thank you so much for asking your question last but not least we have torrey um torrey he is the uh, uh, the graduate from morehouse who has his own laundry service in okay. california so please go ahead and ask your question hey how you go how y'all doing man um Thank you so much, Record, for putting this thing on. The entire yeah. presentation was was fire as always. Um, you know, I, I like to say that the, the information that I received here was nothing short of a blessing. You know, obviously, I needed it at this particular time. But um, I will say to you, um, first and foremost, thank you for coming out. Thank you for uh, providing course. us with your information because this, like I told you in the chat. You're well known out here, you know. It's, it's not. Said, um, who know me in the Bay Area? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's saucy out here, man. I'm telling you, this. Oh it's, man, wow. We, you're actually the reason why. Um, outside of the emails that I got, um, I got a couple of guys that uh, were like in a, a local group me, um, the Bay Area HBCU like coalition, essentially. Yeah. They actually told me, I was like, yo, like she, she's been doing mass stuff with the marketing and da da da. I'm like, okay, let me, let me tap oh, in with her. So it was, wow, Tori, it was don't divine make me cry intervention. Cry with all, the, all, all these people here. Don't make me cry. Thank you so listen, much. Man. Listen, listen. Really yo, yo, your range, your expertise is, is, is far beyond you. Your name is in spaces that people, you know, you not even walked into yet. But to Thank my you. question, right? Wow. Want to make, oh, you're welcome. Definitely. Want to make sure I, I give the people the appropriate amount of time who, are, you know, other have folks who have questions. Um, <laughs> My question is this, I'm starting with the laundry delivery service. It's, uh, it's, it's within its own right, a luxury service specifically tailored to college students and new renters, right? Okay. I heard earlier today that you were talking about uh, making sure that you put your voice out there. Want to yep. make sure that people hear what you have to say before you actually see what you have to say, right? Mm-hmm. So my question is this, do you think it'd be advantageous to start a podcast and kind of just funnel the folks from the podcast to the laundry service and then kind of like on the back end maybe get some marketing things like that not marketing um merchandising and things like that or would it be you know what i mean so boom let me give you this i understand what you're asking me um perfectly and then i'm sorry guys i i hadn't been looking in the chat someone kind of asked the same question that you're um asking um so one of the things that i said was um before someone buys from you they buy into you so when i'm saying that um what i'm saying to you guys is don't be afraid to put your story out there the more that someone can resonate with you the better right like in um I will take again what Tori said, like for him to say like, one, I don't even know anybody in the Bay Area. I don't even know if I, I think I've been to the Bay Area, but like to, to for him to hop on here and say that means that I am putting my story out there enough to not he- even have even been to the Bay Area for someone to see it. Um, and they can, and they can, they can either resonate in a few different ways, right? Like I share my journey with epilepsy a lot um, because that resonates with someone. I share so many different things. And like I said, that doesn't mean you have to share everything, but share something because it clicks with someone else. So when I say share your story, you never know how it will resonate with someone. Put yourself out there. Um, Now, Tori, to answer your question, um, when when you mentioned where should you start, the podcast is great, right? However, there are so many different ways that folks can 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 learn more about you. Um, so yes, it's the podcast, but it is also you going live from time to time. Why should folks need your laundry service? And then for what you do, connecting with spaces like HBCU Buzz, HBCU Pride Nation, um, maybe subscribers of HBCU Buzz get ten percent off your laundry services. Um, there are so many different ways That's that you good. Can, yeah, there are so many different ways that you can kind of work this. Especially right now, it's a prime time to be black. It's yeah. a lot of times to be a college student. These yeah. college students don't know um, if they go home one week, if they go home the next. And there are so many different ways that you can kind of work this out. So, sorry, I will say this because this is a part of a longer question. Um, DM me. 
um, connect with me and we can kind of get your question answered better. I don't want to hold anyone up. But th- did that? Uh, did big that thing. A little That's bit? perfect, man. That's perfect. Okay. I appreciate okay. you. Yeah, we'll go oh, tap in. You too. That is great. I'm so glad that you all is there. Um, and thank you for the person who just donated her millennial closet. Thank you for donating. I also want to tell you this. My sister, she is in school. She goes to Allen. She's on scholarship. And that is a real thing. Now, one of the things that will always uh, be there is a balance. And a lot of these journalism students, they're saying, listen, I, I, I need some help. A lot of our HBCU journalism students, so a lot of them who are applying, um, you are definitely going to help some uh, people in need. So feel free, go to the link. I put it in the chat. Donate. No amount is too small. and You will be helping uh, somebody uh, pay their school. Do we have, we will take one more question. Um, can I ask? Oh, my one? goodness. I'm sorry. One of my friends, Lakeisha Renee, popped in. But I think they on Birmingham time. Can hey, I ask a question? Should, yes, go ahead. Feel free. You were talking to me, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, Reagan, I had popped in a little late. I don't know if you mentioned it already, but um, when you're looking for a publicist, like, is there categories for that, or is like having one just overall? Yeah. Um. So one, I'm gonna throw to Leslie too, cause she's a, another amazing publicist. So I, I'm putting her on the spot as well. Um. I will say that you want to look for someone who, who is comfortable working in the space that you are 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 working with. Um. So what that is is you want if you are a financial literacy person, maybe you want someone who's dealt with finance before. Um, maybe you want someone who's black, maybe you want someone who's Latina. I think that how you differentiate who you want is by having conversations. So it's great to do these surface level things, but like when you want to sit down and have that one-on-one with some someone, make sure you do that, but be clear on your story, right? Because yes, your publicist is there to help wordsmith. Yes, your publicist is there to um, take you through the motions, X, Y, Z, get you pressed. Um, but I think clarity starts with you, right? So like, I cannot tell a story if it's jumbled. Oh, well, right. you know, I don't know who my audience is. I don't know this. Thing. <laughs> Those things happen, right? But like, if I am going to be the one talking to ABC or NBC or whoever that is, you clarity has to start with some clarity has to start from somewhere. Um, I, I think you search hashtags, uh, you ask friends, um, if there's someone that you know who's had a publicist before, what was their experience? like um know that pr is not marketing know that pr is not social um this person is at at its bare minimum getting you what they call earned media um so when i say earned media to you i'm saying that that is press that you have because your publicist pitched it um if i see shared um kamara and i doing this conversation right now that is a shared media um media medium um so meaning my audience now becomes her audience her audience my audience now becomes her audience her audience now becomes mine. So shared, earned, and then owned. Um, so uh, Terry mentioned the podcast. Tori mentioned the podcast earlier. The right. podcast is what he owned, what he will create, so on and so forth. So shared media, owned media, earned media. Um, multi-step approach. So that's what you want. I learned more here than I did <laughs> at school. Where were you at? <laughs> Girl, and I don't think I learned too much at school. I love my HBCU, but I, I can't even, whew, Jesus. <laughs> I learned more here. Than I did. I'm thinking two years. Not as planned. But um, to all of the HBCU graduates, congratulations and make sure that you are representing your school in the right way. Thank you to Venice for donating to the scholarship fund. It is much appreciated and you are helping a lot of students. So she has also a platform called Becoming uh, a Storyteller. So make sure you follow her on Instagram. And um, I'll tell you this, this recording will be available tomorrow and it will be put on YouTube. I, I know I'm gonna watch this again. I'm just being honest. So while I'm doing my work, I'm gonna be watching this. But Reagan, you have answered so many questions. It was almost like a business consultation. <laughs> on business consultation i love it (laughs) because we were asking about business questions how do you make revenue but you also have to know whether you work at a news station whether you work for yourself or you're doing a nine to five and a side hustle you are your brand i really like when she said people buy into you first and whoever you are it's going to come out on screen right Mm -hmm. so um 
I just really want people to begin to jot down and write down some things that you want to do. I know a lot of people, I don't hear a lot of people saying they're ready for 2022 because I think y'all got a lot of stuff to get in 2021. Yes. So. <laughs> my, my business partner says people don't buy products, they buy stories. So I, I say before someone buys from you, they buy into you, but hers has way more sauce on it. People don't buy products, they buy stories. So um, mm-hmm. keep, keep putting your story out there, be intentional, um, and just make sure that you are clear on your messaging and ki- kind of go from there. That's how you make money. Sharif, hey, it has been such a long time. It is so good to see you. It has been years. <laughs> Hope I know, okay. right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a question for you, but you know, you know, I'm gonna let the story play out. No, go ahead, ask your question, and then you'll be our last one. Okay, okay. And I think this this is something that everybody in this room could learn from. Right now, everybody wants to be a creator, a journalist, everybody wants to be, you know, just front and center and, and get a PR. But I think it's important to research why you have a PR, right? Like you just don't go and get a PR just because. A PR is when you know who you are, you know what you're presenting, you know what you're putting forward, and then you go and get a PR. I want to know um, from, from Reagan, what goes into, when you take on a client, what are you looking for? What makes you say, you know what, this is going to be my client rather than just take on 25 clients that is not valuable? You know what? That's important. Wait a minute. Because another thing, as you all begin to a lot, uh, for example, as you put yourself out there, because you do have to put yourself out there, a lot of people are going to come to you. Not every person is somebody that you need to work with. So Reagan, that's really good. And we are going to wrap this up with that question. But in short, tell us how do you decipher who is for me and say, no, I got to send you somebody else. Yeah. So the one question, so one, we have a checklist, right? We have um, an application, if you will. So if you do not fill out that application and it in its entirety, we don't want to work with you because I, I need a few things before I can say, yes, I want to work with this person. Um, one, have you worked with a publicist before? Um, do you know what PR is? Because people think it's a mixed bag of things that it's not. Um, is your story mission driven? Um, because it, it's it's great to do the celebrity stuff, but I, I want to make an impact. So what, what does your story look like? Um, who are you servicing? Um, what's your why? Uh, how is that resonating with different folks? Like, that's how I know that I've found a client that I want to work with. Um, so if they're clear, if they're clear on their why, um, if they are clear on what PR is, because if you don't know what PR is, then you're just spending money. And I never want to feel like I'm taking someone's money. Um, and then also, um, I think one, what's the budget? Like, let's be, let's be clear. Like, what's the budget is real. So I think those, those are the reasons, you know, those are the things that make me want to work with someone. That's good. Thank you, Sharif, for answering your question. Last but not least, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me or feel free to reach out to Reagan. Again, she is a global PR specialist. And excuse me, she changed her name um, during the pandemic to a communication strategist. So she evolved and she elevated. And she's gotten a lot of clients. I'm telling y'all, every time (laughs) I, um, like it was the Baltimore Association of Black Journalists, every time. Like I would just always see her and I'm like, we have to connect. And then um, feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions. It's been a pleasure speaking to you guys. If you would like to donate to the scholarship fund, students will definitely be helped by this. No matter if they stay in school or if they don't, they still gonna have a balance. If you went to HBC, you know about a balance. <laughs> so we're helping people in that area as well. But thank you again. This recording will be sent out via email tomorrow. And I can't wait to talk to everybody. Bye-bye and have a great night. Bye.